Hi, Eric Metcalf, and you're watching Unhappy Hour. Welcome back. This is the time where we're going to talk about the Cavaliers in the NBA. The Cavs played the Warriors two days ago on Christmas. What did you make of the foul, no foul nonsense toward the end of the game, Zach? I was mad, but again, it's a regular season game. That's true. And they're at home, and people like when the home team wins. I understand that. That What is it? The NBA has the best home field advantage out of the three major sports? Pretty, um, pretty sure that's what yeah, it is. Yeah, I would say basketball does. I'm uh, sorry, I was reading an article that said dead cougar found in man's luggage at Las Vegas airport. And I didn't know if it was an older woman or if it was an actual cougar. Thank you for that insight. Uh, would you care to read the story for us? It seems like uh, urgent break. It was news. an actual cougar. Oh, an actual cougar. <laughs> what was her name? Okay. Um, yeah. It was not a 40-year-old woman. It was an actual <laughs> dead animal. <laughs> I'm done making jokes on that because I could keep going. Um, okay, so... the. the that's kind of what you expected out of that. Kevin Durant and the Warriors got the win. Obviously, the, the Cavs don't have Isaiah Thomas, but he's getting real close to playing, isn't he? How, how, how soon do you expect him back? Like I said, he was ready to go. He was already ready to go. They saved him because he did not want to play in the Warriors game, and you have to understand why. D don't give him the competitive advantage of uh, learning how to defend him. Yeah, and nor do you want that to be his first game back when trying to figure out everything offensively on national TV against the Warriors. Having come back against Portland, against Damian Lillard this week, I still think it's a better opportunity for Isaiah to come back. You don't want him on the national spotlight, and they didn't know at the time whether Curry was going to be playing or not. That's the last thing you want to do is put him in that situation. Kind of like throwing a rookie out there to start the season. Like yeah, the so with the Cavs, you're going to see this team, how they mesh over the next 40 days with Isaiah Thomas. And, you know, and when they get back and they get back healthy and see what kind of piece. You know, Tristan Thompson, I think at this point, is very expendable. I think he has very his, – his value is completely diminished on a team like the Cavs now um, with Kevin Love at center. Because having Jay Crowder being able to four, being able to play the four completely makes up for having the defensive liability there. Crowder's so good defensively and can defend the two through the four. Um, I was thinking you know, about very this. Very well, too. Uh, uh, Zach, I, jump in. I was thinking about this. What would you, how would you grade Jay Crowder so far on the Cavs? I think he's gotten a lot better. I think defensively, I don't think offensively he's been huge, but he's been getting a lot better. I think he's been a really nice acquisition for the Cavs. How much do the Cavaliers miss Kyrie Irving at this point is the question. You're getting a little bit more out. I mean, Kevin Love had a monster game. He's having a lot of I mean, that's time. the thing is, Kevin Love, you've been able to open <laughs> up the offense without Kyrie there, and Kevin Love has essentially become piece number two in this offense. Of It'll be interesting to see how they incorporate Isaiah Thomas into the offense. I think they will. I think they'll pretty easily incorporate him. I think you're going to see a couple weeks. You might see them struggle a couple, you know, a couple games where they get blown out against a crap team. You'll see it. Um, it happens. But they do have Oklahoma City, and they do have Golden State, and they've got Portland coming up. They've got some good teams they're going against. And, you know, Thomas is going to be in for, you know, he's going to be in for quite the workload against going up against some of the top point guards in the game. There's no doubt about that. So don't don't worry about what you see from Isaiah early on. You might see, you know, a, a, a three for a 16 shooting one night. You might see that, but he's going to be rusty. The guy hasn't played since the playoffs last year. Right. You know, it happens. He's going to have to shake off some rust. Um, so I wouldn't panic. That's why the Cavaliers are going to give it a good month and a half. Hit the trade deadline going in there going, okay, we're going to trade Tristan Thompson at this point. He's going to be the centerpiece for any deal that's surrounding, you know, either DeMarcus Cousins if the Pelicans fade out, or it's going to be surrounding for more likely a DeAndre Jordan piece. I tend to think that's what's going to happen. Um, you know, I just think Thompson at this point is very expendable. The, the drama with the Kardashian crap is just, I think it's gotten to a boiling point with the Cavaliers because he's not contributing anymore. You know, I mean, he's been very just, I mean, he just hasn't been a factor at the Cavs. And if you can bring in DeAndre Jordan and rework that offense, you know, imagine having in the, the lineup of, you know, you know, sometimes in there, and this is, this is the thing, it gives you the flexibility to have DeAndre Jordan at the five, Kevin Love at the four, LeBron at the three, or even have LeBron play the two and have Jay Crowder in there at the three. It just allows you to have flexibility. With Thomas at the one, or it even allows Wade to play the point guard. You know, that's where in a bigger lineup against Golden State, where Wade's more effective playing the point. Man, that is. You know, so it, it gives the Cavaliers legitimate scoring options. Defensively, they'd be very scary having LeBron, Crowder, and DeAndre Jordan in there. Very scary defensively. 
So how how much of, of Tristan Thompson's problems have been the Kardashian curse? How much? I don't know. What, I I can't tell you, Brian. I think I think he just isn't as big of a factor anymore. I think the injury. You know, he went from being Mr. Durability. You know, not missing a game, and not, not just being injured. It's just it's gotten to a point where I think his time has come to a close in Cleveland. And I think they will move him. I'd be very shocked if Kobe doesn't move him by the deadline. At this point, with who's available out there, you know, and does Tristan look like a centerpiece anymore that you can build around? No, I don't think that. So even if LeBron does leave, you want to shed his contracts off the books. You want to, again, if LeBron does leave, I don't think he is. But if he does, you're at least stripping this team, this thing down to the studs again, and you're putting yourself in great position with the Brooklyn pick. The Cavaliers have a lot of flexibility. And don't forget, if LeBron does stay, they can go and move that Brooklyn pick again in the springtime or the summertime after the draft. They can pick whoever and then go and trade the pick, and that pick will hold a lot of value. They can do that, too. Do you think LeBron's really going to let his boy Tristan go? How much of that do you think plays I think at this point, I don't think it matters. I think LeBron's all about winning, and I I don't think it matters anymore. Tristan's such a non-factor on this team. Ah, man, that's just... Don't forget, J.R. Smith is still here. You know, he's a clutch (laughs) guy. He's still here. You know, I mean, and also it gives the Cavaliers the flexibility in the offseason to go out there and bring in a guy like Carmelo or Chris Paul if they have to. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got you. What, what, what you know, they, this this allows them to go after and go, you know, because they'll have money coming up the books. If they want to go and bring in CP3 this offseason, there's a way they can make it done. They can get it done and, you know, involve a trade with Isaiah Thomas or involve some other pieces. This allows them to have the flexibility to go sign Isaiah because they'll have so much money coming off the books. I mean, in Isaiah Thomas and DeAndre Jordan, it gives them the flexibility to do it. And having Shump's contract out of there as well. You know, this gives them tons of movement and tons of working room. This team is not just... I can tell you, Kobe Altman's not just building this team for this year. He's looking at this year, next year, the year after, and the year after that. He takes it, and he's looking at three years in the future, minimum, of how this team is going to be built. And they're looking at all different angles. I think right now they're they're pretty sure LeBron's going to stay because where's LeBron? You know, here's the thing. If the Rockets go and beat Golden State, and then the Rockets beat the Cavs, I can tell you LeBron's not going to go to the Rockets then. If, if the Rockets lose to the Cavs in the finals, why would he go to the Rockets? He's not going to the Warriors. If the Warriors beat the Rockets, I think it's a possibility. But the Rockets have to do so many things in order to make that work. Now, Daryl Morey's a genius. However, I still just don't see that one happening. I don't see LeBron going anywhere in the Eastern Conference. I don't see the Philly thing being, you know, legitimate yet for a while. Just because, you know, again, you don't know about Embiid's health. And same with Ben Simmons. Let's not forget, Simmons missed an entire year. So you're not sold on him being an answer yet either. No, the only the only thing the only real legitimate possibility I see is Houston. But are you going to write off guys like Aaron Eric Gordon, Clint Capella, Trevor Ariza? Are you going to get rid of those guys to bring in LeBron? Yes, LeBron is that good. But are you going to strip all your great pieces down when you have a team that could possibly beat Golden State right now? I think when healthy, you know the problem is the reason why the Clippers never went anywhere in the playoffs was because of Chris Paul's health. Chris Paul got injured in the playoffs every year with the Clippers. Never healthy. Last something? year, they were up 2-0 on Portland. Lost. Chris Paul got injured. Uh, when they had the, the, you know, they, you know, when they, they choked that huge lead away to, um, when they choked that massive lead away to Houston in the playoffs two years ago. You know when the Clippers did that. And it was just like, and then Houston won. You're like, oh my God. It's just, you, you know, the problem is you cannot rely on Chris Paul's health. And I think, I, I think it really comes down to it. And that's why, you know, Chris Paul is my one of my favorite players in the league, but he's never healthy come playoff time. Well, let me let me bounce up back to the Cavs. I want to talk about two two players. We'll start with Wade. What do you make of Dwayne Wade now? We're, we're you know, kind of right up on the midpoint of the season. We're kind of seeing how he's settling in uh, with his role on the team. His health has been an issue over the past few years, and his workload has decreased. May, maybe this is a perfect fit for him. What do you make of what's going on? I think it is. Look how effective he's been, and look what a great fit he's been since they've moved him to the bench. He runs at second unit. The Cavaliers, the Cavaliers have the best bench in the league because of him and Jeff Green and Kyle Korver. That's another one I want to talk about, Jeff Green. But uh, I mean, don't forget, Shumpert hasn't even been healthy. Imagine if you upgrade Tristan Thompson and, and, and Amon Shumpert and DeAndre Jordan, you place Shumpert and you place DeAndre in the starting lineup, but either pulls J.R. Smith out or moves Crowder to the bench. Look at that flexibility you have with Channing Fry at the five, Crowder at the four, or Jeff Green at the four, Crowder at the three, Corver at the two, and Wade playing the point. My God. 
look at that flexibility you have with your bench. Your bench could beat some starting. Mo- your bench could probably beat twelve to fifteen starting lineups on any given night in the league. Yeah, that's a that's a strong bench. That's an entire second squad. Um, yeah, they, they they start rolling really deep there. I, I've I've seen em- immense. I was going to try to combine tremendous and immense um, growth out of Kyle Korver, at least in as so far as his understanding of the system and what's expected of him here. What have you seen from Korver this year? I think he's been great. I think he's, I think he's especially been great with that second unit. You know, he seems to get the you know LeBron's playing an all time high, and I think he's setting up a ton of shots for Korver. And I think that's what happens without Kyrie Irving in there. It's creating different kind of spacing on the perimeter, and it's allowing Korver to take a lot of shots. I think he's been great. I think Crowder's finally starting to get comfortable, and he's been much better. I, I'm really impressed with the way the Cavaliers have been playing lately. Even though they lost to Golden State the other day, you see how what this team can be at full force when they have an Isaiah Thomas. And like I said, they're not done. They're not anywhere close. This is not the final roster what you're going to see. You will see an upgrade at the center position. You're going to see an upgrade over Tristan Thompson at some point this year. I've never been wrong on the Cavs' moves coming up, you know, with a player possibly getting traded. You know, I called the waiters thing when it happened, the Verizhao one. Um, there's going to be some movement with Tristan Thompson coming up soon. Again, I don't know exactly what it's going to be. Could they go and pull the trigger for Cousins? Yes, I believe they can, especially when you see the success that Kyle Kuzma's had. And, and, you know, when you get a draft pick at 26, 27, that can be that, you know, that can be that effective. Um, you know, I, I think it's a huge bonus. Yeah, I mean, that, that would depend on, on the, the Pelicans thinking that that experiment has failed. Um, would you would you be willing to pull the trigger if you were running things over there? Um, with the Cavs pick, yes. With the with the Brooklyn pick, no. I think you have more flexibility in the off season to go and move the Brooklyn pick. I would not move the Brooklyn pick for a soon to be free agent. Don't forget, Paul George might be available too. <clears throat> Do you, if you're running the Thunder, would you make Paul George available? Depends how. Depends if there's no improvement by fe- the end of by middle of February by the trade deadline. Yes. So you'd give it six weeks. Uh huh. Okay. So the, now, if I start to see marginal improvement, I mean, here's the thing: we all know the Thunder are not going to beat the Warriors or the Rockets in a seven-game series. We all know that. Maybe. Maybe. I'm not going to put money on it. I, I wouldn't. The, the only way it's happening is if Chris Paul's out, which you said is likely possible. It could happen, but they're not going to beat the Warriors. I mean, they're not they're not in the same category as the Warriors. They're, they can't even challenge them. Nobody really is. There's two or three teams that really have a chance to compete for the top. I mean... And like I said, I the Cavaliers are one upgrade away from being able to compete with the Warriors. They're an Isaiah Thomas and one addition away from being able to beat the Warriors. They are. <laughs> yeah. And the Cavs would be com- almost completely dominant if it wasn't for Golden State sitting out there. You know, I mean, imagine replacing Amon Shumpert and Tristan Thompson with Isaiah Thomas... And DeAndre Jordan, what kind of an upgrade is that with the Cavs? What do you like most I mean, about DeAndre's game, and what do you dislike most? He's so about? good defensively, and I think offensively, you know, you can sit in there and create lobs on the fast break with him. I, I think he's a great rebounder. I mean, obviously, the guy can't shoot free throws, but you know what? It doesn't matter to me. I, I still think he'd be a huge addition to this club. Right. I really do. I think. I think just getting the offensive rebounds that Tristan doesn't get anymore. And, you know, and being able, how's Draymond, you know, the problem is it prevents, it prevents a team like Golden State from going to their death lineup so easily. You know, with Draymond playing the five at that point, you know, it, it sends them, they've got to play Pachulia or they've got to play someone at the five. You know, because DeAndre Jordan can guard the perimeter. That's why he's so athletic. Can sit there and DeAndre Jordan can play, you know, that's the thing is he can go and guard, he can guard the perimeter. He can guard a guy like Draymond at all points. That's what makes him so lethal. And it prevents a guy from like Kevin Durant and Steph Curry or even Clay Thompson or Draymond from driving. Yeah, I, I could see you what, know, I, I could see what you know, you're having a big body that. and they're a guy that can block three to five shots a game on any given night is huge. We'll even remember when the Cavs won the title, what it changed when they slowed down the pace. They played with Mozgov. It just it was a different kind of Well, that of was game. the year they lost the title when Mozgov was playing. Oh, sorry. I'm... I'm mixing the years up. So that was the year they lost the finals. Um, the Cavaliers went and essentially beat Golden State's death lineup in the finals a couple of years ago. Um, but don't forget, they've added Kevin Durant to that mix. If you want to compete with Golden State, That's you need to be able thing. to keep up with their scoring. You need to be able to keep up with their scoring. They're a great defensive team. You know, you need to be able to play with them on all levels. And adding DeAndre Jordan adds that piece defensively. Adding Isaiah Thomas 
who I don't think would be as effective against a team like the Golden State Warriors because you need someone that can stop, you know, Steph Curry. You know, and, and the problem is Golden State loves to switch. You know, the problem is, can you have Isaiah Thomas affording him to guard Kevin Durant at any point or Clay Thompson? Absolutely not. You know, Golden State will keep, Golden State will keep setting screens at the top of the key to pick, you know, to throw off Isaiah Thomas and they'll play off the mismatch. They're that good and they're that well coached. Um, and that, that's what would worry me about it. So that's why you can't do that in that situation. Um, you, you really can't do that in that kind of situation. So that's why I think where Isaiah is limited in a series like Golden State. But again, if you do go and you play, you know, Wade plays the majority of the game at the point guard and he's well rested going into that series or LeBron's playing the point, you've even got Crowder in there playing the three. Well, LeBron's playing the point and LeBron's on Curry. It totally creates a different kind of effective matchup. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, it allows you to move your lineup around so much having that. And again, if you want to play love at the five, it allows you to. If you want to play love at the four, it does. But the thing is, with a trade like that, it allows LeBron to go anywhere on the floor between the one, two, and three position. Yeah. You know, he's such an effective point guard when he plays the position. Um, you know, he could be an effective two guard, too. That's the thing is LeBron can play anywhere. And, you know, defensively, if you've got him going up against a Clay Thompson, he can shut him down. You know, and then it puts Crowder on Durant, so it eases LeBron's game up. Well, that you know, we've talked this whole conversation about the Cavs and about potential trades, and we've just glossed over the fact that LeBron James is perhaps having one of his finest seasons ever. He's having his finest season ever, and that's the thing is, you know, he's not breaking down. He still looks incredible. He still looks incredible. It's the best I've seen him. He's shooting a three better than he ever has, and you're just like, how is he doing this? Um, you know, I'd love to see him play until he's 40 at this level. I think it'd be awesome. I don't think you'll see it until he's 40, but I mean, why can't he keep this up another three, four or five years at the way he's playing? You know, I don't think this good, but I mean, being on the level he was at the last couple of years, if he's as good as he was, you know, a couple of years ago, then the Cavs are fine. He'd be competitive for a long time. Yeah. I see him playing until he's 50 years old, by the way. Uh, absolutely I'd love to see the guy play until he's in his mid 40s, shatter every single record. You know, I mean, he'll be a top three. He'll be a top three player in assists by the time he's under top five at worst. Top the top scorer will be a top ten rebounder. I, I mean, like, I mean, look at it. I mean, look at him. The highest PER of all, all time. I mean, don't. I mean, he's the most athletic player. You look at. You know, I was going back watching the the nineteen eighties. Nick Wright had posted it on Twitter and watching how bad they were in the nineteen eighties. <laughs> the Bird Celtics against the Magic Johnson Lakers. You're like. My God, these teams are terrible. The, the Cavaliers would crush these teams. Imagine what the Cavs or Warriors would do to those two teams. It's a, They'd it's, kill them. It's amazing to look back on the historical differences and similarities over time and the way that the game is played. Uh, you know, baseball, the juiced ball era. I mean, even the 80s and 90s football where they used to have the Sports Illustrated greatest hits where, I mean, just absolutely ripping guys' heads off, uh, you know, total cheap shots by today's standards. People always say LeBron could never hang with the big boys of, of the, the Detroit Pistons. I don't think they could hang with LeBron. I think it's the biggest BS when people say LeBron. LeBron is the greatest player to ever play the game. I agree. You put him in the 90s in the Jordan era, these Cavs teams would have dominated. <clears throat> would have dominated uh, Michael Jordan's teams? All yeah, of the teams. they're set up with three point shooters, they would, have, they would have killed them. And same with the Warriors, too, and same with the Rockets. All these three teams are so athletic. They would dominate those big, slow teams of the era. Small ball dominates. That's why we've seen, that's really why we've seen the reduction of the NBA center. I mean, in order to play nowadays, you need to be, a, you need to be able to shoot the three. Look at all these good centers nowadays. A lot Cousins can shoot the three. You have never seen Patrick Ewing taking threes. Rick Smiths, Brad Doherty. Uh, it's just, it's just totally room. It's not as slow pace as it used to be. And get the ball to the center. I mean, we used to see a ton of dominant centers. And the league just isn't like that anymore. You play small ball and you run, you you outrun these centers, and it totally changes the game. I mean, we had Hakeem with a really strong mid range game, but not a three point game. Yeah, but the, but the, but the mid range game isn't effective anymore like it used to be. It's now the three point game, which is the effective strategy, and that's why teams are more to it. The league's advanced. Yeah, you want to shoot you know, shots within three feet or from twenty three feet. Like you want to be. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, then. We can agree that LeBron would still kick ass regardless of which era he was in. I mean, you put LeBron back in the 1960s against Bill Russell? Are you kidding me? That'd be Are fun. you kidding me? LeBron James would be averaging 90 points a game. 
How many would he be holding up on that sign? Like Wilt Chamberlain is hundred. How many? Imagine would... putting him or Kobe in that era. I mean, oh, Kobe man. would have had a game with 125, 135 points. Yeah, I, I can At absolutely. Least. What way? What'd you make of Kobe's? Uh, both of his jerseys getting retired. I thought it was pretty cool. You know what? He was. I mean, again, it would be so weird anyway. If one, if a guy on the Lakers, a new, a new Lakers, can wear eight or twenty-four, could you imagine that anyway? Why did he switch it again? What was the story behind that? I forgot. I forgot. That's fine. Then anybody watching after the fact, remind me of what the point of that was. I, I read it at one point, but I didn't care enough. Um, I still don't care enough. Yeah, well, someone online will. I'm looking at you. UFC is MMA. Um, anyhow, what about any other potential NBA trades as we start to wrap this up? I know there's other teams that are looking. I think with superstars that you'll see, I, I think that you'll see is I think that you'll see again the Paul George rumors heat up again. I think the Demarcus Cousins rumors, the DeAndre Jordan rumors, um, and then you'll start seeing. I think the Toronto Raptors will go after another piece. I think you'll see Orlando start to sell soon. Um, you're going to see, and you know, you're going to look at teams like Utah. Are they going to sell? Um, you know, I mean. I think teams are really coveting draft picks now just because of the success of guys like Donovan Mitchell, Kyle Kuzman, this draft. And you see, you know, guys like Larry Nance. You see there's been so much late-round success in the last couple of years. You know, even guys like Jimmy Butler, Hassan Whiteside, um, Isaiah Thomas. Teams are coveting draft picks more than ever, and especially when you're a bad team and you have time to develop, you know, a young player. Like, the Cleveland's not going to develop a player at 26. They're going to be sitting on the bench playing one to four minutes a night. You know, in L.A., Kyle Kuzma can do a lot more there than he can in Cleveland because he would never, he wouldn't be as effective as he wouldn't be getting the playing time. Right, right. It's that simple. It's good for In order for, for these guys to progress and get, you know, in order to get the minutes. I mean, like, again, in Boston, we would have never seen Jason Tatum as effective as he is if Gordon Hayward was playing. That's true. That's true. And and, and that's kind of what, what makes it such a good position for each team to be in when you don't have the stars. You don't have the huge payroll. You don't have the huge hoopla on the fanfare. And, you know, it gives the, a team like the Cavs or the Warriors the opportunity to go title chasing. You know, players that are established, the veterans that are trying to get that chip. Uh, you know, it's, it's legacy time. There's a lot of players that want to prove that they're capable and worthy of being a part of something like that. You know, and again, and again, let's get back to the Andrew Wiggins thing. What has Andrew Wiggins done this year? He's been terrible. He's regressed. His shooting sucks. He's never been any good. And you And that's the him. thing is... I'm so sick of the people that say that, that, you know, oh, the Timberwolves could have Kevin Love, and we'd be so much better with Wiggins. Cavaliers would not have a championship ring with Andrew Wiggins on their roster. Not even close. That's it. Kevin Love has been playing fantastic. Yeah, exactly he, the he's, point. He's, Kevin he's Love been... is a far superior player. The Timberwolves would kill right now if they could make that trade to pair up, to, you know, Carl Anthony Towns with Kevin Love and Jimmy Butler. And Jeff T, you don't think they would make that deal in two seconds, trading it back? They'd do it in a heartbeat. I mean, Kevin Love's given the, the, the Chris Bosh treatment. You know, he's he last I, year he reduced no, his right, role right. and he's getting it back. Do you think Minnesota year. would make that trade in a second to pair up the yeah. best front court in the NBA to have Carl Anthony Towns and Kevin Love? That would be very I mean, tough to get there. Yeah. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Wiggins isn't even in the same league. Is, is Kevin Love. I don't even know if Andrew Wiggins will ever be an all-star. I just don't think he's any good. Hmm. Well, remember, you know, that's the Jarrett Wright thing. Do you, do you trade for Pedro Martinez or do you... You know what? Here's the thing. Talent? In any sport, it is so difficult. Brian, let's take, a, let's take a look at this for a second. It is so difficult in any sport to win a championship. Is it not? Yeah. One team okay. year gets it. And you look at it with Cleveland. Would you have rather seen the Cavs be a perennial playoff team every year for the next 10 years with Andrew Wiggins? Let's just say he would have developed in Cleveland, but never a championship. Where would you take that one championship? I'm ha I, 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 the one championship was life-changing, and I still want number two and number three and number four. Exactly, but you would never have gotten it with Wiggins over Love. Kevin Love's not 35. How old is Love, actually? I think 28 or 29. He's like right there in his prime. He's doing great. He's 29, I think. I think he's 29. I think he's my. I think he's just a little bit younger than me. Okay. Yeah, you take the proven thing. Two in the hand is. Uh, yeah, two in the. One in the hand is. Kevin like two Love's in the 29. Book. I'll be 30 in September. He's still. He's not an old guy by any means. We're in good position as long as LeBron stays, and you still think he's staying. I still think he's staying. I'm. I'm I have no reason to write it off at this point. Um. 
You know, I think it looked a little more bleak at the beginning of the year when they traded Kyrie, and you're just like, Ugh, okay. But, you know, like I said, Kobe knew what he was doing all along. Did, did, did I say that? Yeah, you did. You, you, you've had a lot of respect for Kobe Altman. He was not going to get fleeced in a trade, um, I'm telling you, for Kyrie. I mean, and it's looking good now. That Brooklyn pick is still, you know, Brooklyn's still, and they're still top ten. It could get higher. You never know. I mean, they could start losing. You know, don't forget, it's the second half of the season. You know, when you start playing a lot of road games this time of the year and you're a young team, it starts to wear down on you. Um, you know, we watched what happened with the Knicks last year when they completely tanked after they had all those road games in the second half. Um, so we'll see what happens. I mean, I have a lot of faith in the Cavaliers, though, moving forward, and I think they've got a great front office in place with Kobe over there. I think I think that Ty Lue's done a fantastic job this year. Um, so, so they, and I think it just took a while to get the pieces in place, though, to get, you know, you know, the thing is, when you're adding guys like Wade, Crowder, Jeff Green, and you're adding, you know, you're adding all these guys to the mix and pulling Rose out of the rotation, seeing where all these guys fit, it took a while for this team to really see, you know, what is our best roster while we're on the floor? Yeah, we're going to lose some games here, but does it matter come playoff time? No. That's true. We've you know, proven that it doesn't matter. You know, the Cavaliers have the ability at any point to go string over 15 games and, you know, 15 wins in a row at any point this season. And mark my words, you'll see another 10 plus game winning streak this season if they're not sitting everyone. Um, you'll see it again. Because, because they are able to work so well together. Um, I think LeBron, I think they're a very cohesive unit now. Wait till they add another couple pieces to really go. And I'm telling you, LeBron wants to take down the Warriors. Kobe's going to go get the pieces to take down the Warriors. And they're going to be able to do it without having to give up. They're going to be able to do it without having to give up a significant piece, like the number one, you know, like the, the Brooklyn pick. Right. They will give up their own pick in a trade. They will not give up the Brooklyn pick, even for Paul George. Yeah, to rent him for half a year, and who knows? Do you do you think um, do you think Dwayne Wade stays next year? Do you think Kyle like do you think some of these if LeBron players... stays, Dwayne Wade's here next year too. Yeah, I mean, why would he go anywhere else at this point? I just don't. I just don't see him going anywhere else. Yeah. I... Now, if LeBron leaves, I see him going wherever LeBron goes because they're playing so well together. Um, you know that that's my thing. I I I don't see Wade leaving. I think he's very happy here. I think he's really enjoying his time in Cleveland. Um. So I, I just don't see him having a reason to leave. I think if the Cavaliers sucked at this point, yeah, you could be like, okay, well, it's a one-year experiment with Wade. It's not going to work out. But that's not the case. I mean, he's been so good. Yeah. He's embraced the role of playing, you know, as a backup, which, I mean, he's just like the ultimate team player. And he, and he can still flip the switch and give you a quick 18 points in a quarter and a half when he feels Yeah, like he's it. that good. Yeah, he is. Um, okay, well – what else? What are we watching then between now and the All Star game, and then as we approach the trading deadline? Any interesting storylines? I, I tend, I tend to think you'll see. I mean, also, I think the Grizzlies are going to be selling at the break. Grizzlies. You know, they can't get Chandler Parsons' contract off the books no matter what. They don't have any assets to trade. You know, that are that good. You know, even Gasol. Um, I don't see the Cavaliers going after Gasol because of what went down with David Fisdale. Um, you know, Bron and Wade are both really close with David Fisdale. And apparently Gasol had something to do with the firing. Um, you know, they weren't getting along. I just don't see that one happening. Um, so I don't I don't know what kind of move you'll see, but I think you're going to see Memphis selling. You know, um, I, I think the Knicks are in a really good position actually now. You know, you look at all these teams that made trades, that traded their superstars. In the NBA, very rarely when you trade your superstars, this is the thing, very rarely when you trade your superstars does it work out for the best. You know, but we've witnessed it. Every time Carmelo Anthony gets traded, it seems the other team does better without him. Look I at the Nuggets when is. they had Gallinari and all those players. <laughs> wonder why that is. And everybody that LeBron plays with does better. Hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, when you take a look at it, take a solid look at it for a second and say, the one that shocks me is the Indiana Pacers. Losing Jeff Teague and, and losing... And losing Paul George, you go, oh, this team might win 10 games this year. They're going to be the worst team of all time. But Oladipo's come through, and Oladipo's an all-star. Yeah. And Sabonis, who looked like he was a, a fra you know, a fringe NBA player last year, like a fringe 14th man on a team, looks great this year. That's the thing. When you give a rookie the opportunity to play significant minutes, it totally changes around the dynamics of a basketball team. He would never have had that opportunity in Oklahoma City. Man, I, I feel like Cantor was going beast mode the other day, too. Yeah, 
What do you have, like 31 and 22? Who was that guy? I, I, I mean, that was a different kind of game from a different kind of player than I'm used to seeing. I mean, you're right. You put a pot, you know, I do a lot of gardening. You, you, you grow food in different containers, in different conditions, different watering techniques, different sun frequency. Things can either thrive or they can wither and, and die, you know. And I, I think environment plays an enormous role in that. And hopefully the Cavaliers have turned this situation in the front office and in the locker room into such a conducive place to attract everybody to it that you're going to find some of these veterans coming in for league minimums and opportunities to go ring chasing. And, you know, even if you miss on a Derrick Rose, you know, you hit on a Dwayne Wade, you, you, you miss on – some of the players, but then you get Jeff Green, who's playing fantastic. Um, yeah, I, I I couldn't be happier with what's going on. Obviously, I could be happier if we won on Christmas Day, but like you said, it's it's just a regular season game. It's a Christmas game, and it does change you know the, the perception of how Durant does against LeBron head to head versus when he was on Oklahoma City. I, I totally get that, but this is a team that's not really playing for the. NBA regular season, we're playing for the NBA championship rounds. Um, I, I, yeah, you know what? Like again, it's a regular season game. It's not. It's not a playoff game. You might, you know, when you watch on Christmas Day, it's the national stages. There's nothing else to do on Christmas other than go to the movies or watch basketball or watch crappy NFL football. I mean, your choice. So most of the country's tuned into this game. Right. Um, it feels a lot bigger than it actually is. But let's let's take a look at it. Two years, so two years ago, the Warriors won on Christmas Day. The Cavaliers beat them in the finals. Last year, the Cavs won on Christmas Day. The Warriors beat the Cavs in the finals. This year, the Warriors won on Christmas Day. Hopefully, it translates into the Cavs, translates into the Cavs winning the finals. Um, I'd be totally okay with that, Zach. I'd be very happy with that. Very happy. You know what? It was a loss where Isaiah Thomas wasn't playing and Steph Curry wasn't playing. Take it for what it is. Yes, it was a fun exhibition. Moving on to the next. Um, yeah, and I would... I, I would not be surprised to see another Cavs streak. North well, let's take a look at how much better both of these teams are in the postseason. Did either lose? Like, did the Warriors lose a game last year before they played in the uh, NBA Finals? No. How many did the Cavs lose? One. That's how good when the Cavaliers turn it on, and so do the Warriors. Both of these teams can annihilate any team in the NBA. Yeah, unbeatable territory. And the Cav- the Cavs shot absolutely terribly against the Warriors. I know the Warriors played good defense, but. I mean, almost nothing went in for us, and we still almost won it. It's pretty astounding. Yeah, and that's the thing is they played a bad game. They almost won. you got to take a look at the positives of the game. And you say, okay, well, yeah, Golden State, yeah, you could say, okay, we didn't have Isaiah Thomas, but at the same time you say Golden State didn't have Steph Curry. Yeah. Um, you know, Golden State to me seems like a better team. If they're without Kevin Durant, they are better with Steph Curry than they are with just Kevin Durant. I will say that over and over. That team is better when Curry is there instead of Durant. When they're both there, they're obviously at their best. But it's, I'd take Curry over Durant any day with that roster. If you gave me a choice and you put a gun to my head over it and said, is this team better with Curry or is this team better with Durant? You can only choose one on this current team. I don't give me Curry 10 out of 10 times with it. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a big fan of how Kevin Durant's uh, progressing as a human, as a player, his career, his persona. I'm just I, – I like him. I just, I just think life. they're better with Steph Curry – than they are with Kevin Durant. I think, obviously, together, oh, yeah, two, they're both great. But don't forget, that team strung, what was it? They went, like, 15, 16 games in a row without Durant last year. Yeah. Now, they did need Durant in the finals to get past Cleveland. That was that was a given. Now, Cleveland needs a piece to get past the Warriors. They're going to add another piece. I don't know what it's going to be, but the Cavaliers need another piece to get past Golden State in the finals. You're th- it's very obvious. We all know it. You're thinking you know, it's DeAndre Jordan. You just expect that to happen. Yeah. Okay. Well, who knows? And then next year, maybe LeBron teams up with with uh, Tristan in Los Angeles with the Clippers. <laughs> I mean, I doubt LeBron's going to team up with the Clippers now, especially with CP3 being gone. I know. I know. I know. Um, well, it's it's something the Los Angeles media is going to bombard me with either way. So I had to work it in there before we wrapped it up. But anyway, Zach, I, I want to thank you for jumping in, uh, doing a special Christmas. In between Christmas and New Year's episode, do you have any plans for New Year's? Um, nothing crazy yet. I am going down to Miami though on the fifth for you know for five nights. So. So you're gonna miss the parade. You know, unfortunately, but I've got I've got I've got to go down there for work. So. Yeah, do what you got to do. I I don't want to do it, but if it happens, I I've got to do it. I mean, how do you do a show called The Unhappy Hour and not go participate in that protest? I I've got. Oh, to do I it. I completely agree, Brian. 
So anyway, well, you, you have a safe trip down there. We'll talk again soon. And as some of these trades start popping and uh, we get some more to talk about in the NBA, we can gladly jump back in, maybe even cover some uh, NFL playoff preview action in the next week or two. Okay, sounds like a plan. All right, to be continued, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy New Year, all of the things. You take care, Zach. We'll talk again soon. All right, see you, Brian. Peace. All right, everybody. There he goes. That's Zach Barris. Um, always a good show. Always a good time when he joins the program. Whew. Yeah, the Tristan out the door thing. It's just kind of sitting with me, resonating. I'm trying to think about what that means. We met him off season. Met him over in Vegas. Um... Yeah, that's what happens with injuries. It changes the dynamics of the team, and then just things happen. That's the nature of sports. Some people only get their shot because of injuries. Uh, look at Tom Brady. That was Drew Bledsoe's team, don't forget. Anyhow, I want to thank you guys for watching on Facebook. If you are leaving comments, I apologize. I've seen a lot of you watching, and I'm not seeing the comments populate for whatever reason. Um, but whatever. Thank you, Mark Zuckerberg. Um, but we'll be posting this one on YouTube. We'll put it out on Twitter. Subscribe, youtube.com slash the new American media. Support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash the new American media. It all helps. Um, and like I said to Zach, happy belated Christmas, happy belated uh, Hanukkah, happy early New Year's, and whatever else you may be celebrating. I hope you have a safe and a happy and a healthy one. So we'll talk to you again soon. Take care. Peace.